come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. And we're on this quest Mm. to conquer the world. To do that. It feels like a long quest, Colin. I know. Well, I mean, we haven't conquered the world yet. We need their help. You listening to this show. Help us out already. Jesus. And all you got to do is hit that like or subscribe button wherever you found us. And that will. (laughs) Rise up. There you go. uh, share the podcast Mm. spread the word of the saturday night freak show podcast yes Mm -hmm. spread the gospel thank you if you already have appreciate it we love you these are the internet (laughs) radio superstars sean michaela holly and i'm colin what enthusiasm coming from holly i'm eating ice cream i'm excited (laughs) very much is uh tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by holly herself me Happy birthday, Holly. Thank you. You're Ten days my birthday. Figured we document it. What's the freak show birthday week around <laughs> here? Really is, three yeah. out of the four we hitting had a us up. So. We had Collins a couple days ago, and in a couple more days, we got Sean's. Yep. Yep. We had, Very uh, exciting. And we had uh, meat and cream tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, don't, do that, that Don't ruin we my celebrate. ice cream. <laughs> do not ruin Enjoy your cream, Holly. Do not ruin my ice cream. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> son of a bitch. I'm so, 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 so sorry. <laughs> Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched To Die For. To Die For. Mm. From the year. 1995. 95. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, directed by. Gus Van Zandt. Gus Van Zandt. Making his debut on the yeah, show. Yeah, we've never watched a Gus Van Zandt. We, we didn't do it. the Psycho remake in any We point? have it, Surprise. but it's been on my list. Yeah. yeah probably... <laughs> that seems the most eligible for the yeah, freak show, really right? You would does. think. Like, it really does. Psycho. I don't know. Yeah. Has time been kind to that? Well, we, who knows? Uh, we might yeah, save yeah, it because yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot to discuss there. We'll get to that one. Uh in a movie starring mm, so many people. everyone, mm-hmm. so many people of this era, but, uh, but mostly most, mostly Nicole Kidman Nicole herself. Kidman, yeah, who is she's on the wall, right? Yeah, she's on a, the wall. Didn't we put her on the we wall? We put her on the she's wall. Gotta already. Already. It's gotta be. Yeah, calm. Be. Days of Thunder. This. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Days of Thunder. Oh, I realize why I forgot about Days of Thunder. We did Moonshine. <laughs> Stepford, <that night. laughs> Stepford Wives. Stepford yeah. Wives. Yeah. I was like, okay. she's already on the yeah, wall. The yeah. others. Yeah. The others. Yeah. The others. Right, yeah. Right. Right. Wow, she's what kind a, of what a versatile like, actress. Up to the yeah. I was like, we and I've got a list of like four or five more I can bring from her too that I feel like are freak show appropriate. She has quite the filmography under her belt. Do we appreciate her enough? And I put my in this category because mm-hmm. maybe I don't. You don't. Maybe I love her. I'm always have. As, I stand. Um, having not seen tonight's movie before, mm-hmm. maybe it's because I'm not uh, as informed I her. about her earlier work. Oh, her early is... stuff has the yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's makes it so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's the good stuff. Which yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. still yeah. discovering apparently. Yeah. I wish it was weird enough. I would love to bring Far and Away. Like there's so much that we could make fun of. Have you seen this movie where they're going for land and shit? We could make fun of this so much in that movie. It's just not it's not weird enough. have you seen a uh, birthday girl put that on my list for birthday a long Girl's time a yeah oh, that would have been such a good one for tonight oh damn it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah birthday hell? girl's been on my list for a damn while it. Yeah. maybe that's the one that. maybe that's the one I thought this one was what's birthday girl about she's a mail order bride and shit does not go right uh, maybe that's the one I kept and thinking what, Vincent of Vincent Cassell head. is in it too isn't he the guy who yeah. mail orders her I yeah. think so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah because I like I said I've never seen this one but also I don't ever remember this movie being advertised as the movie I saw it in. Really? Maybe that's that's me. I, I don't have very is this, a good recollection well, of how Well, a question, because I hadn't seen it before either and really don't know much about the movie. Is this based, uh, loosely based right. on true events? So it, this, yeah, mm-hmm. this is based on the book To Die For, written by Joyce Maynard, and that book is loosely based on um, an actual case mm-hmm. uh, about Pamela Smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was a like a local like TV journalist? Well, I don't, she wasn't a TV journalist, was she? I don't think she so. was no, mm-hmm. she was an audio visual teacher, mm-hmm. I think. Okay, yep. Um, but she did have an affair with a student. Husband was killed, so very similar. It's loosely based on that, mm-hmm. not entirely, but. And that was like a huge case that like gripped the nation for a bit yeah. in 1990. It was a big deal because it was like. 
it was like the first iteration of a Mary, Mary Kay Letourneau type situation, you know? Yes. So, and yeah, and then it led to this murder and it, it was a book called nuts. teach me to kill yes. based on yes. the Pamela smart yeah. story. Yeah. And, there was, <laughs> and there was a TV movie mm-hmm. uh, that was about the actual Pamela smart case, not yep. loosely based on it was uh, starring Helen Hunt. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In 1991. And there's been a million podcasts about it. It is. Yeah. I'm it looking at some of the pictures of the people involved. Joaquin Phoenix was a good cast for this, yes. based on some of the people I'm yep. looking at right now. Okay, mm-hmm. so are they yeah. going like true crime tonight? I, it had the movie has like a true crime kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. It does for because sure. the mechanism of it it's filmed mostly like a documentary. Yeah, mm-hmm. in certain aspects of it, yeah, narrative and documentary kind of back yeah. and forth, but mm-hmm. also but you know looking the same way. Mm-hmm. Now, if it were up to me, I know this is gonna feel like a tangent, but if it were up to me and I was going to make a Carrie remake, this is how I would do it. I would do it like this that's a great idea. because that's how the, that's book, how the book is actually is. written. Yeah. The yeah. book is oh. written like a, a talking head documentary after the carry yeah. event. And really? it's every, yes. And it's everybody recalling it and they're talking about it like it's a 9-11 level tragedy. Yeah. And why like, has no one thought, it, oh, this it, is perfect well, for a movie? The, yeah. Did they do a little bit of that in the TV remake of Carrie? Did I they? Think, really? uh, the two part. Yeah, I think they did a little bit of the uh-huh. framing story was them talking to the you know interrogators yeah. after the fact. Yeah. Very interesting <clears throat> way That's really interesting. Oh, yeah. A, I want to read the book and B, okay. It's a really good we book. We need to do the, uh, I hate to say we yeah. need another carry remake, but, but that's how we should do, do it. it that way. Well, this is, it's not like, it doesn't seem like it's framed up, you know, like there's a lot of uh, that kind of documentary artifice to it. The characters no, are just talking directly to the camera. To the film mm-hmm. camera. Yeah. And there's the idea that there's somebody who must be interviewing them, and this has been put together like right. after We the hear them every right. now and again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once or twice, we hear the quote unquote documentary filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Gus Van Zant, prior to this, I want to say had done. I saw Drugstore Cowboy. Yeah, he did Drugstore Cowboy. He did uh, My Own Private Idaho. Yeah, that was the one after. Deal. That was the one yeah. before this, right? That was right before this. That was 90. And that was River Phoenix. Um, that was River Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Keanu Reeves, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And then that was an indie movie, but this is a Columbia Pictures. This was so a this big is movie, yeah. First studio, yeah. Yeah, and then also in this movie, we have his debut as an actor, Casey Affleck. I, this is the first movie? This that, is his first that movie. That kid's face playing himself. The yeah, seriously. <laughs> they, oh, my yeah, God. He was too real. Very familiar. A lot of a lot of people were for that part, and he was specifically cast because he still had that stupid accent. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and but, that led but, to Ben. But yeah, then okay. so while they're while, while they were filming this movie, he went to Gus Van Zandt and said, "Hey, you need to read this script that my brother and his best friend wrote, which was good, good, good hunting, hunting. Okay. which well, is probably like the, most Gus Van Zandt's most like, like, yeah. accessible yeah. thing." Nineteen ninety seven. Right? Yes. Hunting. Okay. Yeah. So like two years after yep. this. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that this was um, written by uh, Buck Henry. Buck Henry. The comedic Buck Henry. Yeah, I was, because uh, I'm like, I know Buck Henry, you know, from stuff, mm-hmm. but I was like, for, but from what? I actually had to go look he it up. The, he wrote The Graduate. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh. And he... Um, he like, wrote he wrote Get Smart, like the series yeah. and like... Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, he hosted right. he, he, did, he did a lot of Live, like 60s like, TV. Thumbs up and, yeah. book. Wasn't he like, because one of the things that Wikipedia said about him was like he had hosted Saturday Night Live like the most until Steve Martin dethroned him apparently at some point. Yeah, and it was, and he was like a running joke on Saturday Night Live. They would constantly make a joke about like him dying and all this stuff. Like it was like a weekly thing. They made a Buck Henry joke. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He was a big deal on SNL. He's in the movie because he was an actor too. He He was a writer. He was a director. I think he co-directed Heaven Can Wait with Warren Beatty. Mm -hmm. And he was, and he's, so he's in this as like uh, the teacher at the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he did um, like Catch 22. What's up doc? He did a lot of comedy. Yeah. Uh, He's kind of a legend in the comedic world. Did this movie win or was it nominated for any kind of Oscars? It seems it like this is maybe a screenplay. It was nominated for Golden Globe, uh, Critic Choice. It was not nominated for an Oscar. Actress? Nicole Kidman for, won the Golden Globe. For this she movie. won the Golden Globe oh, She did, this. okay. She, no, right. she was not and, nominated uh, for an Oscar. Right, and the first uh, Empire Award. But she was actress, she but. was okay with not being nominated simply because after her performance in this and the Oscars were over, she got a fan letter Saying that she was robbed and that fan was Sean Penn. 
Oh, yeah. So go. she was like, that made up for it. Yeah. She didn't need to win. <laughs> That'll do it. Sean Penn thought she was robbed. That'll do it. <laughs> this movie, when I was watching it tonight, it kind of you know takes you back. It was 1995. Mm-hmm. Um, the theme of this movie is very of the 90s. And yeah. I guess that's yes. the thing that I was like, yeah. oh, that's right. Like, next, you know, a hard copy. Yeah. Right. And, oh, and yeah. Uh, Natural Born Killers mm-hmm. was yep. 90, 94, somewhere in there. But yeah. this whole idea, I guess that... Um, True crime was big at the time. But it's... The it's this like narcissism. Yes. Uh, it's like a culture of narcissism. Serial mom was the year before. I just want to put okay, that in yeah. the conversation. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, but that's it's so it's in the zeitgeist. Uh, you're yeah. nobody unless you're on television in America, yeah. right? This is like these are the prophetic movies, which have come true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Very much so. Were they warning us? Is this a warning? I don't know. I, I sit there watching. I mean, if you can see people and see trends and see you know what people are capable of, you can see in the future a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because you had the, uh, I think, home video, the camera, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. came around in the 80s, but it was this huge thing. But by the 90s, the camcorder, you right. know, mm-hmm. so people more people were, making, were on tape, on camera. Yeah. More people were longing for so it. it's self-absorption. Like in this movie. Yeah. So who is she in this movie? Uh, she plays Suzanne Stone, who is a aspiring journalist. She dreams to be the next Barbara Does Walters. Does she want to be a journalist? No, she wants, she wants to be, to be a star. famous. She wants to be a star. Yeah. Okay. That's how she wants to do it, but she wants to be a star. Yes. Okay. This is because when she was a kid, she saw herself on TV. She made yep. a reference, I think, later on. It's like some people just have a passing. They see themselves mm-hmm. on TV. And Her dad, you know. Red Foreman, uh, was, yeah, yeah. was yeah. videotaping her. <laughs> yeah. yep. And she saw herself on TV, and that was that. She needed to be famous. Mm-hmm. So, um, she star was born. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And interest. I mean, yeah, I mean, I suppose that could be like another title of this movie. Um, <laughs> it's too bad. It's already taken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she, uh, desperately wants to be on television. Mm-hmm. Right. And so how does she go about, cause what, like, you know, I mean, what background does she have? What qualifications delusion? does she have? Yeah. Yeah. Delusion. Yep. She has an associate's degree in delusion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes is, that's all you need. Is she a sociopath? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. 100%. So she um, meets a guy. Right. Yeah. She's she's a, she's a small town girl. She's, um, they're in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Was it Hope Falls? Little Hope. Little Hope, New little Hampshire. Little Hope, a great yeah. name yes. for the little town. It's <laughs> Little Hope, New Hampshire. It's like, oh, beautiful. Great way to set the stage. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, small fish. And Heel. she meets uh, a guy who is Matt Dillon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Matt Dillon, who mm-hmm. is, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a, a drummer. Uh, he works in his dad's restaurant. Yeah, he's um, quite he's Italian. He's Italian. 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 Yeah. He's Joey Tribbiani. Yeah. yeah, he really is. <laughs> the first, like, half hour of this, it's just like, this is a sitcom. Yeah. This is... Yeah. Straight sitcom. Well, written by Buck Henry. Well, yeah. right, but, yeah. Yeah, but like, because like, their meet it. cute is like the whole first act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like wow. Like, but uh, you can see it how it would play in front of a studio audience if they were shooting mm-hmm. this on like mm-hmm. a three camera sitcom. Mm-hmm. Like you can see where they'd stop for the joke, especially when Buck Henry's <laughs> when she's like, actually, uh, I'm a, I'm a, uh, whatever she's like, I'm a technical journalist. And so he's like, oh, oh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that was the best line. He's like, oh, okay. That's great. Well, it does have, it has a lengthy setup. I guess Mm -hmm. if you don't know, going, I mean, I guess I did know going into the movie that it was a story about, you know, someone who killed, has her husband uh, killed. Mm -hmm. Um, But we don't actually meet uh, Joaquin Phoenix is in the movie also, Mm -hmm. but we don't meet him for until the second act, right? So Mm -hmm. that first act is told in a way. where we are given because it it appears like this true crime or true crime documentary mm-hmm. that uh, it's kind of out of order. They're giving you like foreshadowing of like the stuff that's uh, that's coming up, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so that's kind of how we're meeting like everybody in like these flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So they have like a, a meet cute. They get together, and there's you know then we int- then we're introduced to uh, the families right. Ileana Douglas is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to her? Right. I just yeah. saw a. Did I just see her in a trailer recently? I mean, she's done a lot of TV. I was well. like, I, I feel like she shows she's. Up. I feel like she just shows up in a she lot of stuff. She shows up and you're like, oh, yeah. okay. We last saw her in Stir of Echoes. She was in Stir To of me, Echoes. she'll always be. She, she was in that. Cape Fear. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. 
Cape Fear. <laughs> she, did yeah. a TV show. she did a TV show with Jane Moore at one point. I forget what that one was. She's done a lot. Mm-hmm. And she's the sis- She's uh, Matt Dillon's sister. Yes. yes. This okay. Would, uh, this would be um, what's her name if you cast it today? I have a feeling. Um, from um, Gone Girl, Ben Affleck's sister. Um, oh, what's her name? From Ghostbusters and yeah, and from the I can't remember her name. And I can't for no idea. Got nothing. <laughs> she got nothing. I cannot remember. I think her she's name. great. What is her name? Is it Carrie? Yep. Yeah, I, I cannot remember her name, but yeah. What the fuck. Okay, so the the pair of them are getting together, but simultaneously, she is pursuing her dream of getting into television. And Carrie Coon. Gotcha. There it is. Carrie nice. Coon. There it is. I'm sorry. And so she <laughs> on their honeymoon. Yeah, she plans their honeymoon specifically to attend this like journalist conference, <laughs> which is right. wow. How how quickly can you have problems into a marriage, yeah. right? Like what? <laughs> Yeah, she says it's because he likes to fish and she wants to like let him go do his fisherman thing during right. the day. Um, She's not coming with. It's not good to tan when you're on TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think mean, that's the opposite of true. Don't you want I some would, color? I, like- I've worked with enough people on TV. They need to tan. Yes. They yeah. should tan. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot who don't, but they should. But I do know that it's not a good sign when your honeymoon is specifically so you can go do separate things. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not a good sign. That's yep. not good. And so she meets uh, George Siegel? Se- Seagal. Yeah. yeah. Siegel. Mm-hmm. Siegel. Okay, Siegel. we're going with the, the Seagal. He's not Stevens. Not credited brother, in the cousin, movie. or anything. Yeah. He's a Seagal. I think he's um, dead now. But he's basically playing like a, an elder statesman of uh, the, the broadcast industry, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I need you TV people to chime in whenever something feels even slightly accurate. All to this your is true. Experience. Everything you okay. saw in this movie is fucking true. Because you all three have the experience. Some, I don't. Like some of them have toned down to protect the innocent, but this is all fucking true. <laughs> is there is there this type of character? Yes. This, this is, is okay. Matt Lauer. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Even if there's, yes. Yeah. Okay. But there's yes. Yes. You know, I love my newsroom drama. I love hearing it from you guys. It's the best. So, well, yeah. we both still work in news, so we're going to be a little quieter yeah. on this subject tonight. Uh, but yes, uh, they do exist. Well, he propositions her because that seems like basically the the gist of this, right? Plus is, the point of the whole, I mean, that and the whole joke that he tells us. Yeah, yeah. He's there. But she learns like so much from that, I think, yes. right? That this uh, woman came it's out to... The naivety that yeah. she comes with. That slowly gets stripped away. Mm-hmm. It like it activates a different mode in her, almost yeah. like it's like, oh wait, I can weaponize this. Yeah. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. She learns how to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it gets used on her, and then she's like, okay, all right, well, mm-hmm. I can use it my own way. Yeah, because I thought like in the opening scenes, like she came off as completely bubble headed and like you know doesn't know anything about right. the world or what's going on. Right. But it does seem like after this moment. She starts getting like really crafty about mm-hmm. a lot of things. I mean, obviously, there's plenty of even great holes, you know, uh, mm-hmm. plot holes all over the place for detectives uh, eventually to to find this stuff out. But yeah. um, so she uh, goes back home and then applies for a job. <clears throat> and the great Wayne Knight is in this movie as her boss. He's like works at yeah. this, like the, I don't, it's like a public access, mm-hmm. the localest and smallest of TV stations. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two people running it. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. made me wonder like, what are their other programs like, you know, but they do have right. a set I was wondering. and I was a like, camera. Like, we have weather. What else do they do? Like, mm-hmm. is there any, does anybody else work there? Does anyone give the news? Is there n- uh, updates of any sort? Is there a news broadcast before the weather? I'm wondering this, because I don't think there is. It didn't seem that way. And I keep feeling that, despite everything that she works on, nothing she's ever made made it to TV, that she is only going there to do the weather. Yeah, And that is all she's done, right? Oh, yeah, that's all she's done. Okay, that's it. But what are you talking about? Only done those little weather updates. Yeah, what are you you, you saying? What is she, uh, what what are... Well, like you were saying, she goes in and she's like, she is... uh, uh, Naivety aside, she is. She has a drive, and she knows she's got her one goal. She knows what she wants to do. Um, she wants to be famous, but and like you said, she knows how she wants to accomplish it. And she wants to be on air. She wants to be a journalist. She wants to be the next Barbara Walters. And she will do anything and start anywhere 
to accomplish that dream. But okay, but when she's doing this and, and saying basically, I'm going to have this job one way or another, yeah. she's absolutely manic about this, like making yes. it a complete scene, um, but has no self awareness to realize how she's coming off. Right. Like I, I, I brought it up during the during watching this. I said, uh, if Tracy Flick lost a few brain cells and grew up to want to do this, this is how she would be. Mm-hmm. And Holly, what did you say to me during? The oh movie? yeah, this. Uh, Reese Witherspoon modeled her performance off of this movie. As Did she, she? Sh- yep. she should have, because they feel one and the same. Mm-hmm. Again, this one feels a little, uh, uh, maybe a little more naive mm-hmm. getting older and everything, but it feels like that same kind of tenacity, maybe mm-hmm. with not a lot of knowledge behind it, but tenacity and, and you know, uh, willing to do anything at this point. So again, she, anything. she anything. comes with the she letter. She comes with the yeah. letter from the joke. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're like, oh, Wayne no. Knight was so close. <laughs> <laughs> uh. but can you imagine working at your job and some lady comes in demanding a job in this manner? Like, I'm I would be telling everybody would be about this for the rest of my life because this would be the craziest shit I've it would ever be great. seen at work. It's just yeah. like, I, I didn't know people like you existed. Right? I, mean, I always thought mm-hmm. they did, but I didn't know. Right. You <laughs> just have you to laugh because it's so insane. Yeah. Well, right. she but seems. There's a curiosity guess, to yeah, it. Yeah, because it's like she seems. <clears throat> it's like, how do you explain this to people? It's like her, she comes off like it's the drive, I think, that's like. Big, bright, and shining. It's yes. like I can do all this stuff. I'm well spoken. I, you know, I, I have all this like stuff. A mom from the fifties. Yep, and I've got all this stuff put together. But the 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 context of it makes her seem like she's crazy. Mm-hmm. You right. know, it's like okay, in a different situation, this would probably actually work. I suppose it does work, but it works only because like they have yeah, nothing. Like, They're it, like it, a two it works, bit, but like it probably would have worked if she had just been normal. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like yeah. if she had just gone in and been like, hi, I'm here to apply for the job. I'd, I'd really appreciate the consideration. They'd be like, great, you're hired. Yeah. yeah. But she like goes full force as if she's auditioning for like CNN. Right. Yeah. A big yeah. news. She got that big newsroom energy. Yeah. yeah big, he's there he's you go. like, I just want you to, <laughs> he's like, I just want you to get coffee for us. Yeah. And she's and like, she's like oh, I will I be Barbara Walters. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like so you're saying you want me to be Barbara Walton. Yeah. I'm here for you, Chief. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I need to contribute in some way for the citizenry, you know, because she's like, this is how <laughs> yes. you actually uh get there. So she ends up with a nightly weather cast. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um in this small town. So I mean, I don't know who's watching. Rain it. Or we shine always with Suzanne Stone. We who's see... watching is the restaurant that her husband's right. is family. that it? The whole restaurant turned he he tells everybody to shush when yeah. her when yeah. she does the weather. Yeah. So everyone has to turn and watch. Oh, yeah. he applauds Can you imagine and like, all like eating oh, a Capri great. and everyone's just like <laughs> everyone be quiet, the weather's hot. Yeah. Ooh. But also We'd be like, that's my wife. Yeah. yeah. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. But I love the take this movie has on on Matt Dillon's kind of role in her life is he's just this like lovable doofus that just cheers her on. And like they just make him so innocent what? and so, so just unaware of what's happening. Uh, yeah. he, is, and, he is Joey Tribbiani. Like, but you're like, she night. has 90s Matt Dillon that's making everyone in this restaurant shut up to watch her on TV. Like he is like, they're painting him as a great partner, mm-hmm. which yeah, he's is a, really, he's really he's effective. He's a cheerleader for, yeah. you know, what she wants to do. Do. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think that's all he really wants in return. Mm-hmm. Well, at some point, I think like even he has, you know, he is like describing him kind of as a doofus. And I guess he he has the awareness to know like, like, OK, this right. You, you're not going to end up on like a big network thing. Right. You know? right. And he's like, but I got this business and we're thinking well, about expanding. And, you know, but it's funny because mm-hmm. but aspirationally, I think they're kind of the same. Because it is just, it's him running the family restaurant. Mm-hmm. He's And what, what do they say? It's like, we should bring in some fake plants for the restaurant. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good idea, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have the water. Like, he yeah. thinks he's, <laughs> I think he thinks he's so much better than her and what she wants to do. But he's right there, too. This is still yeah. small town mm-hmm. stuff yeah. where she, you think yeah. it's big. She has but this, if somebody else looks at it. She has this, you know, to him, she has this little dream. But he's a big businessman. Right. And it's like, no, you're still... That it's it's like you've got that little dream too. Yeah, that, yeah. It's a little restaurant. Like you guys are kind of doing the same thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. But somewhere around there, right? He's like, you know, I'd kind of like to have a family and have yeah. kids. And is that the moment that kind of like, you know, turns her against him? Yeah, I think I- it's the constant pestering because everyone kind of brings it up. I mean, obviously the mother-in-law would bring yeah. it up. He would bring it up. She's a career woman. Yeah, because and she explains uh, it pretty well. It's like, what if I got to go to Bolivia? 
Yeah. <laughs> I can't take the kid with me. <laughs> I oh, gotta no, go. not, not even the kid. She's like, I can't take a pregnant belly with right. me. Yeah. She's yeah. like, I can't be huge on TV. Yeah. It's like, right. Well, you can. <laughs> yeah. It's All fine. this one, she's giving three minute weather reports. Yeah. The very local. Yeah. WWEN. But at some point in her like focus, like in this scene where he's like, because I think it was like, he's like, you know, I'm going to tell her no. No one ever tells her no, mm-hmm. I guess is also yeah. the thing that, you know, because she uh, just talks so much. Is what, Persistence. Guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, that uh, she focuses in on him. The uh, the camera irises in. So I, I like that. The yeah. focus. I like that. Of, and that's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you think about it, you know, mm-hmm. having a, a family with me. And she's like, oh, this guy's got to go. Yeah. That was it, right? She's like, I'll think about it. And it's like, we know that's not what she's thinking. About. Yeah. yeah. We know but, exactly but what it's she's thinking. Fa- about. Like the condescending way in which he, he speaks to her about it. She's like, thinking his thing is so big, but it's like, and you can use, you know, you can help me uh, pick the axe for the thing. And you, mm-hmm. could, you, you could film the axe and edit them up and put them on tape and you could sell those. Mm-hmm. Like you, him diminishing her for what she wants to do. Like that whole dynamic is like, everyone's so fucking watchable in this movie. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I can't take my eyes off these people. I'm a cool kid and I can't take my eyes off of her mm-hmm. just cause uh, the, the way she's portraying this character and just the facial stuff she does like fuck. Yeah. Like she, there are moments where like she really does like, she just like glazes over mm-hmm. and she's yeah. just like gone into another world. It's like, it, it's pretty stunning to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a really good performance. It really so, is. But then yeah. again, I don't know if I've ever seen a bad Nicole Kidman performance. True. Yeah, never bad. You, <laughs> Michaela's I'm considering. I'm thinking. I I I mean, bad. Trespass was a bad movie. The one with Nick Cage. Yeah, <laughs> but right, I bad movie. One. But was she? Bad? I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. remember. Maybe I'll we'll have to bring it. We'll have to talk about it. But that movie. <laughs> and sometimes. now I do remember that I hated, hated, hated Stepford Wives, but I can't remember she gave a bad performance. That movie was just bad. She gave the performance yeah. Yeah. needed. It's, and it's that a movie bad movie, but bad. she's great. Yeah. 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 That movie's. Do you do you want to know who was supposed to play this part? In the who. Meg Ryan. Really? That would be yep. weird. I can't see it at all. No. I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. I can't. What's 95 era Meg, Meg Ryan. Ryan? What's she doing? Um, Sleepless in Seattle. You really just yeah. Yeah. You need the hair. I think the hair is a big factor <laughs> yeah. in pulling this role off. I mean, uh, not the only factor. But well, again, I mean, Nicole it's a wig. Kidman kills yeah. it. So, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, just put the wig on her. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, I think you're part of the way home there. I, I don't know. I don't but think Meg Ryan's got the not like, finesse that not it like requires. This. She doesn't have enough of an edge yeah. like, for something like this. Her yeah. movies are kind of soft. I don't know. You know? Yeah. How do you feel yeah. about, uh, about in the cut. committing murder? Well, I was, see, I was wondering about that. I haven't seen that movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, I know okay. That. Well, that was when she was trying to, I think right. she had been out of the spotlight for a while. Yeah. And that was her kind of come yeah. back. Yeah. Movie. Um, so enter Joaquin Phoenix. All right. So we have this subplot because I think the way that we into segue scene. into it is yeah. part of her thing at the TV station. She's is always she's, pitching new ideas. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a tiny always... montage about it, which is great. Every outfit changes. The hairstyles change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's bringing he's new like, things. He's like, she's just, uh, Wayne Knight's like, she's just always bringing new ideas. Where's her, her idea folder? Her mm-hmm. idea yeah. box or whatever it is. <laughs> right. She's always at her desk thinking of ideas, working on her idea folder. Is this accurate? All pink. Is there always someone that has big ideas? Well, we, there's yeah. story pitches like this every day. <laughs> <laughs> so. Too, I saw it and I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> um, right. So. So these are story ideas for like news stories, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, at some point yes. she would do. Yeah. And the one that she block. seizes on is uh, doing a documentary on like today's um, youth, yeah. like the local teens. So she goes to a school and that's where she meets. Mm-hmm. It's, she does like a career day. Like, this is what mm-hmm. I do. And I want to connect with, the, with the, the youth in the area and show your perspective, share your side of the story. And, you know, I need your help to do that. And she's. We're trying to persuade them to sign up to participate in her documentary. I cringe. Which is this is so, so much for stuff like this. Just I don't know. It's just new. I, all the new stuff comes back to me. You're just like I, I've I've known people like this. Uh, but isn't this the most obvious like infiltration of a predator? Right? Yeah. Like, hey, let me come film your kids for this documentary. Like, to me, but it's just like we, an, a, a stranger that has no connection to this school coming and being like, I want to make a documentary about these sure. minors. Is- if if we didn't have a, a rampant run of 
teachers having female teachers having sex with their students <laughs> throughout the thing. But I also like what were, would um, would you be? Uh, I would think you'd be less suspect of a woman doing that than a man. And no, so maybe they kind a, of I mean, I get the yeah, community. Yeah, that's yeah. why it happened so I was like, not at this was, point in time. Well, yeah, right, yeah. But, but like I'm saying, like this was happening a lot. I felt like during this time, yeah. like we'd see these cases. And yeah. Stuff. But I guess the way that it's, you know, it's, it seems like her initial intention is like some kind of community interest story. You know, we're actually going to talk to the kids and find out what they, right. you know, uh, are thinking about things. She ends up, you know, having a sign up sheet and the kids who sign up are uh, like these three losers. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> this is, I guess, the 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 second thing, which I think Gus Van Zandt did really well at that period of time was kind of capturing like the, the, the teen, uh, not angst. I'm not going with angst, but like, angst. this is like the, the zeitgeist. No, it's like, it feels like an accurate portrayal of like nineties era. Teenagers, yeah. 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 You know, uh, vapid, you have no direction. I mean, these are, you know, obviously like... Uh, it's not... an extreme portrayal. Yeah. Yeah. It truly really is. Yeah. Like, she found the bottom three mm-hmm. of, like, the class. And... So yeah. who are they? Who are these three characters who are introduced into the movie? Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is Jimmy. Mm-hmm. He's the one <laughs> who, who initially falls in love. Yeah, because she like walks instantly. through mm-hmm. and yeah. he takes notice of her. He's a, like, sex-obsessed... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what? I, mm-hmm. it, there's like not a whole lot of uh, brain cell activity no. going on no. there. No, um, and a lot of his humor comes from just like throwing away the joke, where he just mentions these. He's talking normal, and he's just like, "Yeah, when I used to jerk off doing that, like the mm-hmm. like the sexual stuff, just it uh, it." It penetrates yeah. his dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is borderline Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were times when he yeah. reacted to stuff yeah. where it was yeah. like, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. you know. Uh, and Casey Affleck is a friend of his. Plays Russ. And yeah. who Insufferable. Was the yeah. actress Absolutely. who played. Uh, Lydia. Is yeah. Allison Fallon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's really good. She's good. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't recall seeing her in other stuff. I'm, maybe she has done a bunch of stuff. I don't really know. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know much about that Captain one. Google's on it. But yeah. she's really good. These are, um, you know, I think. Nicole Kidman's character kind of zones in on them as, uh, well, I mean, they are going to be like, like, because they signed up, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be subjects of this documentary, so she's going to talk to them. But in getting to know them, she's finding out things, and she's becoming like friends with them, right? Mm -hmm. And then, I suppose, doing inappropriate Mm -hmm. things with the kids. Yeah, well, becoming friends with them, she's purposely manipulating them into a fake friendship, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, crosses many many boundaries. An yeah, adult woman like with full on changing and getting naked in front of Lydia. Right, that's weird. Yep, that's, yep. that's yep. not something that's done. She uh, takes them to the mall. She does all sort of like you know. Yeah, and, she buys and, them presents. Yeah. yeah, that actress has worked with uh, Gus Van Sant. She was uh, again. She was in Goodwill Hunting. She did TV. Um, did, did, she was in Boys Don't Cry. Mm. Uh, Finding Forrester. Another, okay, that's so another yeah, good... Gus Van Zandt movie. Yeah, yeah. She's huh. done some stuff on uh, cool. TV. She was in I'm Not Here. She was in The Happening. Yeah. Her. She's yeah. heard of The Traveling Pants too. Yeah. Um, so we know, I guess, at this point, that the intention here is that she's going to try and get these kids to take out Matt Dillon. Right. Yeah, yeah, she's becoming unhappy with her life, and uh, in order to, I mean, uh, eventually get the big job or end up in L.A. or something like that, she's got to get rid of everything that ties her down there. Mm-hmm. He's holding her back. He's holding her back. Divorce. Got, not got, an option. No, not an option. No. He's got small, small potato dreams. She's got big. Yep. So she begins ideas. a seduction of Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Not that hard. It would not seem. No. Like. No, because he's just like, you know, whatever. He's supposed to be 17 years old or 15. something like that. 15 like, years old. He's like, she he? looked at me. Uh, yes. Yeah. And he's panting mm-hmm. uh, all yep. over the place as he's following her around. And so they begin uh, just having sex everywhere. Apparently, I like that. I like it. Listed at one point. Yeah, that was kind of funny that, <laughs> that he had. Funny. Yeah, where did you do it? And then he has like a, you know, documented list. And he of, like giggles. He's yeah. like, Meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the machinations are put in place for mm-hmm. her to try and convince uh, 
them that they got to kill her husband. Yeah, and she's full on like, oh, he beats me. He's so mean to me and just making him to be this monster to try to get them to to do this for her. Meanwhile, he's at his restaurant telling everybody to shut the hell up because his wife's yeah. on TV. Like, right. he's just so proud of her and just wants to have yeah. babies with her. And Yeah, I got the impression that he thought that things were relatively good. I mean, they, they seem to have like a kind of a it's not a tense home relationship. Mm-hmm. But there's that, I guess, that there may be, you know. Well, we there's, know there's tension because she's not, I mean, she's not who she says she is. She's a total sociopath. Yeah. And she pretends to be who people want her to be or who she thinks they want her to be. Mm-hmm. So when you're in a relationship with someone like that, that's a tense relationship. Yeah. Well, they're they're basically, their goals are completely yeah. separate from yeah. each other. But he seems to be oblivious to some He's of it very oblivious yeah to lots of things it's unfortunate yeah he it's put her cost like, him his life from the very beginning he put her on a pedestal thinking she was perfect yeah mm-hmm. like heavy-handedly they that was how he described yeah. her He's he literally tells his sister like the moment I met her like I just want to take care of her forever yeah. and that's not what she wants she wants to build a career yeah but they're not communicating that with each other so it's, nope they married they both married into a different marriage because it's yes. they saw it differently yes. from the start yeah yeah so how does the uh murder plan take place or a form or what is it uh well lydia informs nicole kidman's character that her mom keeps a gun in the house and that kind of gets her wheels turning to begin with um and joaquin phoenix has basically said that he's devoted to her and would do anything for her so again, it's just adding fuel to the fire mm. in case the Affleck's just a dick. So. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He'll do it for a thousand He'll bucks. He'll do it for the CDs. And CDs. <laughs> and CDs. The movie is a comedy. The movie is a yes. comedy. Yeah. I guess, you know, as we're talking about it, but it is funny. Um, <laughs> Very funny. The, uh, so the, the two kids it's casey affleck and uh joaquin phoenix go over to the house Mm -hmm. one night while of course she's has an alibi she's on the air the year of the the one year anniversary it's on oh right yeah one year and still going strong and they have like the biggest town party to celebrate this one year like the town is really invested in their relationship that feels like they forced people to come and celebrate this (laughs) oh yeah yeah. like like everybody from the restaurant i was like the restaurant was just open and they just made everyone join the celebration (laughs) I was like, that cake is not big enough for all those people. No. <laughs> yeah. I do well, that's like just this, the top though. of the wedding cake. You know, we're saying the town, but like there's this family, um, like I guess maybe that was unexpected to me watching it, that there was that much uh, involvement from like parents, siblings, right. all that other. It's like they are a part the of the younger. Connection, Colin. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Which the, is the underlying. The what mob connection? That, uh. Matt Dillon's family may have a uh, slight mob connection. Mm-hmm. That is the um, the rumor they're, around their family. They're is. a nice Italian family with right, the Italian they own, restaurant. Right, mm-hmm. they own the restaurant. Uh, maybe something happens every once in a while. But I like uh, the, uh, there's, well, there's a couple Colin of. knows what I'm talking about. She comes from What are you talking Italian about? <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of allusions to that one. I think I, I'll, I hope I'll see you guys next week. There you go. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Buck Henry Little explains <laughs> to his student, right? And that, that was a great scene where he's like, you know, you insulted her in, in classroom day. Do you know who she's married to? Right. <laughs> he runs this restaurant. All he has to do is make one call and a guy will show up and he will turn you into a eunuch. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like this yeah. scene because obviously, you know, they're going back and forth with like different types of interviews for this movie. When her parents and his parents are on the talk show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I love that. I love that when her dad is like, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't like the kid at first. You know, I, I thought that his dad had ties to the mafia. I'm sorry, it's it's what I thought. I'm sorry, and he's yeah. just like, it's okay. Yeah. Like it's, uh, <laughs> but they react. It's to Dan like Hedaya. Dan Hedaya yeah. is yeah. the dad. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. This <laughs> is like he totally is. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's another like perfect time capsule of this time too like was talk television ever any bigger than it was in like oh my 1995 God. like you you know well they rattled them off at some mm-hmm. point which i yeah. think you know because they're always they're talking about sally jesse raphael oprah donahue yeah. i mean Geraldo, Maury. Maury. Maury yeah. i mean it's just like yeah where was jerry springer in 1995 <laughs> was oh he was a peak yeah he was <laughs> a peak in the 90s um talk shows man arsenio Ooh. was over at this point right and I- 95? He might be at the tail end. Yeah. 
Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But maybe those are the I'm late sure. night, not the daytime. So like right. Ricky Lake. Right, right. right? Yeah. Still, oh, like, Ricky Lake. during the daytime. Yes. Yeah. Soap operas are over. Bring on Sally Jesse Riley. Yeah. yeah. Montel. Yeah. And it's important that we all get on a talk show at some point in our life. And thank God for Jerry Springer, who made that possible. Anyone could be on television. Anyone for any re- for literally any reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So reality TV is Jerry Springer's fault. It's a, it's a lot. I mean, it goes back to like it, it is the thinking of Nicole Kidman's character's fault. Is but it? Is that most people? Or maybe it was really telling her. <laughs> or, w- or was it <laughs> to be to Pamela be famous? Smart's fault because it's based on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be famous, to be on TV. The, mm-hmm. the, I suppose the talk shows can't exist unless there's people who actually want to be on television. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Judge Judy's fault. Mm. Okay. It's a lot of people's fault. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can pin it down to one person. So these kids sneak into the house and... Uh, blame Ted Turner. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Thank we you. can blame Ted yeah. Turner. I feel like that's accurate. All right. Okay. I don't think anyone's going to argue with you. I don't need a reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they colorized all those movies. Wait, that was where it started. It warped an entire Ready generation. Ted Turner, are we good? <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Um... So they do break into the house and kill Matt Dillon. Mm -hmm. Um, I was kind of surprised that the movie doesn't show the death in any kind of real way, Uh -uh. because I guess that would go against Mm -hmm. the... Yeah. Oh yeah, you do see him laying there. Yeah, laying there the in the pool of blood, blood, yeah. Yeah, not, but that's it. Like, you know, yeah, it is rather... Because I, that would go against the tone of it, I think. I Even think though so. it's a movie about murder, mm-hmm. uh, it just seemed kind of conspicuous. They, did, they didn't really show it. They showed the gun going off and whatever. Right. Um, and so then... Okay, but the joke was really funny in that scene. Because uh, he's like, give me your watch. It's a, it's a Rolex. Give me you know, your wallet. Give me, the, give me your ring. Can't give you my ring. My wife would kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she I would like kill it. you? She would kill you? Yeah. <laughs> And so they kill him. Mm-hmm. He's like, your wife, Suzanne. He's like, you know my wife. Hey. <laughs> 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 she got happy and I was like, you know my wife. I like the scene when his sister's talking about their wedding. And she was like, yeah, she designed the wedding rings. Guess what? They were round. You want me to describe yeah. them to you? <laughs> and gold. Round yeah. and gold. Uh, uh, <laughs> the sister was I r- onto it. That's it. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was great. She was like, I knew. You know, she was just a Sister's horrible person right know. from there, the get go. I knew. Michaela for some reason, I'm like, Michaela, be good I for would, this role. There, one. It. There's always one person in the true crime documentary that was like, yeah, I, I did know. There's always that one character. Right. This like, character she was a exists fucking bitch in the every, beginning. Yeah. Nobody would listen to me. Yep, exactly. Yep. Just in there smoking. I knew from yeah. day one. It's, isn't it crazy how like true crime television content like has not changed at all not since like the beginning of human <laughs> well, history, uh, basically? If, if anything know? else, I mean, like humans have not changed. Yeah. Those characters yeah. have not changed. All the roles, they always seem yeah. to end up in those positions. The roles are the same. The people in the roles just keep changing. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. nothing but is new. It yeah, keeps exactly. happening to these specific people or yeah. Right. Yeah. Specific types. Yep. Yeah. Saying, yeah. Yeah. People will always be people. Right. Mm-hmm. Or the or the specific type of people who will agree to talk on a documentary about murder. Or just okay, if you, okay, but if you knew someone who committed a famous murder and Netflix mm-hmm. was like, you want to do some talking heads about this guy you went to high school? Yeah, I would say every word. Oh, I would too. I would too. I would say every word. It's like, what do you want to know? Yeah. Because you want to be famous? Yeah. What? Because you want to be famous? I like to talk. <laughs> I'm on a podcast. I don't want to be on. If uh, I have valuable well, information. Well, that's true. We I, are all, all talking. If I have right, yeah. valuable information, we're not, we're yeah. not innocent, Colin. <laughs> right. we're, we're just like Nicole right. Kidman's character to a much smaller degree. <laughs> yeah, but a little bit like yeah. her. <laughs> we're all here for a reason. We're talking to microphones for some goddamn <laughs> reason. Wow, I mean, it's a very right. Uh, I just have a lot of feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I think the more optimistic approach is like you're contributing to the greater good of something. Right? <laughs> she thought so too, Michaela. Yeah, it's all in our heads. If you have we a puzzle, are one bad day away. <laughs> if you have a puzzle piece that fits like the jigsaw puzzle of this yeah. crime, I'm going to come in with it. Yeah, I'm going to be like, oh, I have this. Like yeah. our job is to bring radio into the world and yeah. bring your world into the radio. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Very good, Holly. Thank you. <laughs> she uh, seizes on this opportunity. That's, mm-hmm. the, I guess, the thing that, like, I don't know that she thought initially that, that getting her husband out of the way would all of a sudden catapult her into a national spotlight. No, she didn't because we get the scene where she realizes it. And it's yeah. a great scene. She's like, scene. I didn't even think of this, is her attitude. Right. Like, I can't believe I didn't think of this. Right. And this scene is 
beautiful because after everyone after the murder has happened everyone's gotten that phone call where Larry Matt Dillon has you know has been died the parents get it the sister gets it um uh you know uh we end up back in their living room um and we kind of do a circle shot where we finally see Nicole Kidman who 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 is there and it's slow motion but she sees outside the window all the lights. and this is and it's perfect because Cable has just ended. TV is done for the so night. So we're playing the national anthem. Yeah. <laughs> the, flag is up. the national anthem is Duh, the, the flash bulbs are going off. Like right. fireworks. She's like it's... out there and she's like walking towards like, it. Like this she's going is my moment. Right. She fixes her hair. She fixes her dog's hair. She yeah. walks out that front door. I like the way the fucking star is born, <laughs> Colin. But somebody says you don't have to talk to those people if and you don't just, want to. And she just turns and looks. <laughs> it was never yeah. a thought in her yeah. head. Yeah. Like, yeah. We never get to hear what she said. I was like di- I was like so gonna, loud, this Colin. is going to come back later we're yeah. going to see this but um and then she goes to the funeral which is like covered by uh oh, the God, media this is right which we saw at the beginning you saw the media rushing to the gravesite <laughs> yeah she was this there is fucking brilliant cuz she wants to play music at the funeral <laughs> she yeah. puts a boombox on top yeah, of the, the casket priest, the priest has finished talking and there's like a moment of silence and then she walks up and she just like slams down this boombox oh <laughs> by myself and it's she is Beautiful. straight face <laughs> oh my god Everybody's oh grieving widow like, yep. Yeah, the, I love like, the priest the reaction. Fuck? Yeah, yeah, like, um, hmm. <laughs> Child, you need Jesus. <laughs> and Ileana Douglas says, I knew right then. That was when I just right knew. Then. She and got rid of him. Scott. Scott. Yeah. That's a Michael Scott. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Oh, gosh. That's, That's beautiful. So funny. So how do the screws tighten at this point? Like, now she's got to like cover up ends, a murder. Yeah. <laughs> so is that going to lead to more murder? What's going to happen? More murder? It's not that kind well, of movie. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one more murder. Well, Maybe. basically, she has to keep the... Because now she's like, well, I formed these relationships with these yeah. kids. And she has like made them promises and made them think that they're her friends so that they do this deed right. for her. She's slowly working on and them. And now, like, now that it's done, they're coming back to collect and be like, hey, you promised us you'd, you'd make me like a sports announcer. You, you, you're supposed to be my friend. I you were going to pay me. I love the delusion of, if you just look at Joaquin Phoenix, it's like, I would, I would be like... I, like a sports annu- announcer? Like, I'm going like, to I'm I'm go to L.A.? Uh, I'm going to call man. the plays at a baseball game. Call all the plays. I was like, no, you will never do that. <laughs> That's never. the thing. Like, these kids are the most, like, they were sitting duck. They were the most they really naive were. group really of were. dorks. I mean, she realized yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What was what was the song that came on the radio? She's like, I fucking love this song. Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet Home yeah. Alabama. <laughs> she's, she's been uh, I mean, she's That's been when she started dancing in the rain. Right. She's been pouring yeah. emotions out about uh, what uh, uh, Matthew Dillon did to her as a mm-hmm. husband and everything. And, yeah. And they get to the end of the conversation. And that comes on. She's like, I fucking love this. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the swip. Uh, again, proof. More proof that she's a sociopath because the switch to being happy and then. Dancing in the rain, right? Yeah. Well, because it was an all, it was all an act. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. She oh, shuts her, she shuts her act off because she gets distracted by the song. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's very good at that. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's made for TV. She's yeah. Made for TV. <laughs> it's it's. She is that moment in um, broadcast news where William Hurt. They're just like, it'd be great if you could cry. He's like. I think I can get there. <laughs> that's what, so he just sits there for a minute, and then he's just like a tear, a single tear rolls down, and the truth of his uh, deception to the audience is revealed. It's like it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched broadcast news, people watch it. Great Not movie. for a while. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the uh, the heartbroken kids, right? Then uh, of course they're. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, Phoenix is like, just tell her I love her. Just, just tell yeah, her I love her. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that should be enough. I but love she's her. like, go away, you know. Mm-hmm. And but at um, this point, the cops are watching. Yeah, see yeah. that? I guess because, is yeah, the thing. these kids. Oh my god, they they make so many stupid mistakes because it's like, yeah, don't go around in public with the person you committed a murder. Well, and with. I like that the cops are pointing out, like, you guys, do you realize all the things you did wrong? Like, right. <laughs> like, his we've brains, got your fingerprints his on, her. on your shoes, dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's blood in your, your blood, car. Yeah. <laughs> your fingerprints are on the weapon. Yeah. Like, we t- this. You want me you to go on? Is there anything else? Yeah. Like, because we got you now. Yeah. But I also love that she's also like they're 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 stupid and everything. But so is she. Oh because yeah. She's just tossing them yeah. and really not expecting them. It's like I told them to go away. They should just go away. Why wouldn't they listen to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No one tells me no. And they wire up um, Lydia. Lydia 
Oh, yeah. the, the police do and send her in to actually get like the confession or something mm-hmm. like that. I was wondering how that was going to go because she is like, it wasn't my plan. You guys came up with this. I'm like, was she doing it because she suspected? But I'm like, she's not that uh, smart. She doesn't realize she's that this still, is a trap. She even she's said like, enough. Still, right. There's she's still, still incrimination said enough. here. Yeah. She still admitted that he was murdered. Right. So, and, you know. And, well, I mean, yeah. just saying out loud, who are they going to believe? Like, yeah, his yeah. word or my word? I'm right. uh, they'll believe me. Even them yeah. right there in that. And they do end up taking her into custody for mm-hmm. for questioning and as a suspect. Mm. Um, and then we see when she's released from jail, which actually her lawyer in that moment that's like rushing her out. And then before she stops to turn around and talk to the press, that was Joyce Mannard, the, the author, author of the book. Nice. Yeah. And this is weird as fuck. So in that scene, she's like carrying a briefcase in that briefcase are the ashes of her mother because Ooh. she thought she'd want to be in a movie. Oh my God! That's Wait, I what? mean that's Joyce Maynard, the yeah. woman who wrote the book to die for. This oh, is based on. okay. She brought her mother's ashes and had them in that briefcase while filming that scene, so her mom could be in the movie. But she's is, still is she crazy? That. Yeah, I think Michaela, so. We know it. Well, we know it. We but know like, it now, and so we'll live on in, <laughs> in infamy. And she has accomplished her goal. There it is. But she won. You we wouldn't lost. know by watching the scene that her mom's in the movie. Is my point. Her like mom. it's a picture of her mom. You wouldn't know by watching that scene that her mom's in the movie. I truly, it would have been better if she had just been footballing an urn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With her face on it. Yeah, much, oh much better. Yeah, yeah, picture with, taped on with it. With no explanation. Yes. No, yeah, nothing. Okay, but in the, with the vibe for of this discovery movie, discovery later on, somebody watching going, "What the fuck is that yeah. lady doing?" For the vibe of this great. movie, though, that might have worked. It might you have know, worked. this movie's weird enough. Her lawyer was also like that. Like she's been. You create a backstory for that lawyer. Like yeah. there was a high profile case. Her mother was involved. She died. She 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 had she carries her ashes yeah. everywhere to remind people of yeah. the injustice of the law yeah. and what we must do to correct this. <laughs> yes. Maybe that was cut out. Maybe yeah. they did yeah. shoot yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe. yeah, and maybe they just yeah. I'm gonna say no, but maybe, Gus, you know, Gus was just like, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Well, there's a key thing that happens here on the courthouse steps. She, oh, she gives a, yeah, she gives, you know, because it's always, um, I suppose, like, um, I have seen enough true crime stuff to see where the suspect, right, uh, tries to throw the blame yeah. uh, and creates like this kind of alternate yeah. story that's never going to check out. But I mean, that's what she's like. Yeah, my husband, he was actually. He was into cocaine yeah. and he must have become friends with the subjects of my student documentary without me knowing it. You know, they got him addicted to cocaine yep. and then they murdered him. <laughs> it's basically her story. Yeah. On steps. But this is seen by her family. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see them watching it and just like, oh, her family, man. her Larry's family, her mm-hmm. dead husband's family mm-hmm. definitely sees it. Um, what is what's the thing she ends it with? Oh, it's like um, it's like life, liberty, and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like that. And everything else, I think. Life, yeah, liberty, yeah. 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 Stuff. Else, yeah. That was a trailer moment, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It was great. weird as fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, Larry's dad, dad had day uh, like this is when he's had enough, he's right? yeah. and so he snaps. He, like, how dare she? He how dare breaks you the TV. Sully, the name stuff. of my son, my dead yeah. son, my my, yeah, my dead son. <laughs> we never see him making a call, right? No, no, we, I don't think so. no but we see him receive a call. Yeah, no. yeah later, later, but later. not we at this point. Make a but call. this was great because it was the whole, you know. Like the mafia thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It turns out that it, it was actually true. It, it was real. Yeah. It so the whole and way it ex- through. And explains uh, one shot from way earlier in the movie that I didn't know what it was. I, you know what it was. It's just a picture of a house and you hear a scream. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, ah. Mm-hmm. Continue on. At, yeah. At this point, it's revealed that the interview that Nicole Kidman's been doing for the entire movie was her own interview. <laughs> yes. She She's interviewing herself. filming herself. Yeah. I know, see, that, I, that's, in, in first seeing that, I wondered, all right, when does this get revealed and who is she talking to? Because mm-hmm. I always thought maybe she was just in the room talking to police. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like she won't that's confess what so they brought brilliant. her in. Yeah. Like they brought her for questioning and she gave them two hours of the yeah. fucking uh, story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, like, it, it would have been funny if it was, like, to the police camera on the other side of the two-way glass. Right. Something mm-hmm. like that. 
But she was just performing for that, but mm-hmm. she was arrested. I was kind of waiting for that reveal. But no, it is, like you said, her own interview. Mm-hmm. She's giving her own story to sell. Her own someone. interview, meaning she's recording it herself. Yes. It's just, it's her in a room with a camcorder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, who the fuck? And she says something to the effect of, you know, she's had offers from yeah. all these different uh Famous talk show hosts, even Hollywood. networks, and even Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I think she thinks that this is a Hollywood uh, producer. Mm-hmm. Asking, someone has someone has contacted her, and this video is for somebody who has made her an offer. Yeah. So the fact that this is the way that they got to her is like brilliant, right? <laughs> it's like you know. So you imagine Dan Hidea makes the call to somebody. I need a favor. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, how do we, you know, and they're like, well, this woman's totally full of herself and wants to go. Just tell her you so, want to make a movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> tell yeah. her to make a, you know, tell her the Lady story. Lady, see you in lights and pictures. And then bring the tape to a, you know, a predetermined location out on a bridge. The whole movie takes place in the wintertime. So it's a nice <laughs> snowy, you know, Norman Rockwell kind of town mm-hmm. thing. And if she I ever goes, randomly meet David Cronenberg, I'm gonna be real nervous. David Cronenberg, yes. <laughs> real nervous. Yes, why are you here? This movie. Why are you here? Nobody else is here. David Cronenberg. I have he questions. pops up in the most random places. This sometimes. was a shock because yeah. I have never heard. I guess I don't know. Somehow, never heard of missed or the fact that he was in To Die For. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because again, like we said, even uh, George Siegel's in this movie, mm-hmm. and uncredited. It's like I was waiting a lot, for that reveal stack, for you guys. A stack <laughs> has, and then we're just like, oh, uh, David Cronenberg. Yeah. And so he's the Hollywood agent or mm-hmm. whatever. He's not wearing who, glasses, so I didn't recognize him. Mm-hmm. He's did, yeah. wearing glasses, I think. I was like, what the? <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, they, they filmed in Canada? Does he leave Canada? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, yeah. it's a Cana- <laughs> that's how you know. Canada. It's like yeah, a, it's a Canadian movie. In Toronto. Yeah. Whenever you see George or Mary, you're like there you go. Okay, this filmed in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he takes the videotape from her and then it's leads like, her down to. Me. Yeah, I have something to show you. Yeah. In this dark alley down here. Because this bridge. is all clandestine, right? He's an investigative reporter mm-hmm. for the network. He's something. It turns out he's a mafia hitman and mm-hmm. he kills her. This murder also like takes place like off screen. Mm-hmm. We did hear that shot yep. earlier, I suppose, with her screaming. Yeah, I was waiting for like something, maybe mm-hmm. a silencer shot or something like that. But I'm okay with them not doing anything because yeah. you get it, mm-hmm. and, if, and, like, and, and you then, get it even more and later. And that but. flash in the beginning where we hear that scream and it's just that random shot and it's confusing. Mm-hmm. Like it's so memorable that yes. later on, like it yeah. ties back. Right, yeah. you like, didn't you can, forget anything. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. hear it at that moment. You're just yeah, like, like ah, I remember. Yeah. God Gotcha. It's a good moment. Yeah. Yep. It's good. And Dan Hedaya gets a phone call from David Cronenberg doing a dubbed over Italian. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because apparently he's Italian and uh, the job is done. And there's a nod between Dan mm-hmm. Hedaya and his wife. Like, mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. We got-. So this, right, makes me wonder mm-hmm. uh, even though she was recorded on the wire. Was there not enough evidence to... They, she got off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they let her go because they didn't have... Uh, before she gave her court step speech, I believe she got off the charges. Mm-hmm. Or oh, certain things were uh, deemed inadmissible. They, mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't have enough to hold her. Right, mm-hmm. they didn't have yeah. enough. Certain things were deemed inadmissible and she wasn't... They couldn't mm-hmm. hold her for it and everything. So, and so another form of justice right, <laughs> was, uh, yes. was summoned. Um, and presumably the interview that we see with the family on the talk show... Happened after this, so right. uh, which yeah. makes the mafia comment kind of uh, even, you know. It's funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, no, nope, no offense taken. No, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm good. Yep. It does make sense that because mm-hmm. he, he, you would think if she was still alive and the son was dead, he'd be a little more offended by a certain. Yeah, thing. yeah. He's like, we're yeah, both yeah, gone. Yeah, he's I like, had yeah, your really daughter whacked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. It's like that's fine. You can say what you want. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, Gabagool. We both lost here. Okay. <laughs> So now let's bring our families together. We do see she's under the yeah, ice uh, in the uh, the frozen lake. Um, yes. So what's the wrap did we, up? Do we We're, need that shot? Does it? Um, I do you? Does it? Does uh, because it you heard the scream. I, I suppose that she's dead and she's under the ice. I like it 
for what we see at the end when the credits start rolling. Which is yeah, Ileana okay, yes. Douglas going for that a triumphant they, yeah, skate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the whole thing. The whole throughout the whole movie, she's talking about like she's an aspiring ice skater. Like she's 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 like an am, not an amateur, but she's like a minor pro- yes. professional ice skater. But what role did she say she was playing? And like she, the, it was so fucking. Fun. She was what playing. Was um, um, Peggy Lipton in the Mod Squad. In the Mod Squad <laughs> on yeah. ice. Right. For, a, for one number of like a 60s TV. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> on ice. But, All this on ice. But yeah, the fact like, that oh that God. was maybe going to be a part of a network special yeah. right. before right. Nicole Kidman would get yeah. it. was like, and uh, like I hate She her. was like fuming <laughs> that yeah. she might have this like small moment yep. of glory right. so and she was giving her, her and she gave her shit the whole movie like about her appearance mm-hmm. and just all these little digs mm-hmm. and obviously she was oh yeah when she's talking to her she's like and you could just go in and get if, surgery if you could, those, if you get that stuff lasered off you could right. feel really good about yourself <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> like, it was awful Beautiful. and then obviously she was the one that like suspected her the whole time she's like right, this, yeah, yeah. from day one she thought she sucked but yeah so like the whole movie it was just kind of like those two had this like subtle battle. Yeah, what did they announce other? from her that that they tried to one up her that she got a job? Is that what yeah. they said? Yeah, she's like announcing like, yeah, I'm gonna be you know Peggy Lipton in this medley number thing. And then and then, and then and then and then they, um, oh, Madeline basically Dylan. interrupts and is like, we've got news too. Right. She got a job. Was it just the job at the small TV yeah. station? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. She's gonna be on the doing the weather. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Um. So there is like the fallout, I guess, for um, the uh, the three kids, right? We basically are dealing with Joaquin Phoenix telling us, you know, he's got you know thirty years to life or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Life, or life, plus, plus, life plus thirty. Life plus thirty. Life plus 30. Yeah. Um, Russ cut a deal, so he was only he in got for, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. And I think Lydia cut a deal, but we don't know what. Happened Lydia w- got off. Yeah. She, oh yeah, she's fine. Right. She, right. She, she got off the wire. Right. She cooperated with the wire. Probably, like she said at the end, she's probably yeah. the most famous. She didn't she actually do anything besides like let him have the gun, so they right. cut yeah. her a deal. Right. Um. And then, oh yeah, and they were going with why um, Nicole Kidman's character got away with stuff is because she technically didn't ask certain people to do certain things and didn't give anybody money and everything. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. basically the Trump defense, not to get political, but <laughs> that's basically it's like <laughs> yeah, it if I didn't ask you personally and I went through some other people, oh, you can't put it back on me. <laughs> but the irony is that, as you said, she's going to be the most famous because she is going to be on all these talk yeah. shows. Yeah. She's the person who's still yeah. you know right but, uh, that, but that scene at the end when she's ice skating around the pond where she's buried under yeah th- that does it for me I like that. Douglas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah the sister yeah, yeah through that the entire it. end credits she's yeah. ice skating over that which is freely fun. beautifully ice skating <laughs> it feels like um dressed in the way she's dressed to insult nicole kidman's character because yeah. she's pink and 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 was she playing really, you know because she had done the Pe- Peggy Lipton part. Oh right, yeah, yeah right, right. That would have been yeah, the yeah. Suzanne Stone part. Yeah, and this, yeah, yeah, that's funny. Well, that brings us to the end of To Die For, but we're going to tell you whether or not uh, we liked it, whether you should watch it. And uh, before we do that, though, we're going to summon our mailman and read some of your mail. Uh, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Nothing? Do you think he's ever seen a Gus Van Sant movie? <laughs> I feel like he would like them. Yeah? I you know like how him and Gus Van Sant would hang out. You yeah. know how like, some TV shows are animated and like the colors dogs can see, right? So the dogs can watch it? I think that okay. like... hold on. Back up. No, I don't. Yeah. There, there's like a... The, there's a kid's TV show called Bluey and it's about yeah. a dog, right? But yeah. that dog, that show is made in the color spectrum that dogs can see so dogs can watch it. Yeah. Um, you don't know about Bluey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know Bluey. Yeah. I didn't know that. But what I feel like Gus Van Zandt movies are in the like the same like realm of what Igor can understand. You know what I'm saying? He's, like, he's been filming his own reality show for 12 years. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I feel like... Ooh. He always has oh, a camera man. on. Is he just... Waiting to get that chance. A lot like, of us sitting gonna... around a mics, huh? Are we, well, that's a lot, are we, are we, a lot of the footage. Is. <laughs> yeah. Are we in danger? Mm-hmm. No. Probably. Will Igor turn no. on us at yeah. any point? No, are we're we good? Fine. Okay, okay. Well, we should let the good folks at home know well, how he's got, they like, an can. Idle uh, hand and we can't trust it. All of his he parts are idle. <laughs> okay. Well, all right, all right, fine. Well, how can the folks write in to be a part of Igor's mailbag by on uh, Facebook? Facebook.com slash Sorry Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Sat Freak Show, Yahoo.com. 
or on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie to die for, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, Back in the days when I went to art school, our teacher made us go to the local theater that had a presentation on opening credits, of all things, and the use of design, typography, etc., and the guy presenting it used this movie as an example of the perfect use of opening credits. So I'll forever have this memory of sitting in some art house theater, watching like an hour's worth of opening credits, which included Austin Powers 2, the ending <laughs> and ending with the newspaper print opening of To Die For. That's awesome. Right, that's, the newspaper yeah. print. Okay. That's now a this good is, opening. The title sequence is really good. The title it sequence is, is, is really good, good for an exact copy by with the same with uh, music by the same composer. Watch the, the Red Dragon opening. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's right. this opening, yeah. just add Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Because uh, uh, he must have talked to... Danny Elfman did the music. Danny Elfman both. did the music. Yeah. Like, uh, what, what's his name? I can't think of the fucking director. Of... Red, Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner, yeah. Brett Ratner must have been like, I want this opening. He must have seen this movie. He's like, yeah. I want this opening for my movie, but mm-hmm. put in Hamill Electra and the Red Dragon, and let's do that. Had to be. Well, last week we watched a movie called The Hollow Man, and mm-hmm. Mark Harrison wrote in and said, I remember renting this film as a preteen, and then the scene with the blouse happened. <laughs> my sister's friends had walked into the room, and I still remember them teasing me for it. Teenage <laughs> girls teasing a preteen me. Traumatic. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So see, everyone has traumatic memories attached to Hollow Man. It's just one <laughs> of those movies. Yep. <laughs> Simon Carter says, "WTF? Is that Elizabeth Shue? I did not remember her being in this movie. That said, I don't remember much of this movie at all. Although I have been drinking heavily today, so that oh. may have something to do with it. I didn't oh. remember her being in it either, to be honest. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Even though she's top build, yeah. she's yeah. a star I of did, Hollow Man. I didn't remember that it was her. Interesting. And." uh we had an egregious error on our Hollow Man show, oh, but um, yeah. Travis Legler is here to correct it. And he says, as one of the resident Back to the Future fanatics, I would like to inform on Brent's behalf that Claudia Wells was Jennifer Parker in Back to the Future yes, Part she was. 1. Yes, well, we Okay, we corrected yeah. it on the episode. Well, we I could, appreciate we, we it. We forgot Claudia's name. Yeah, we, You're couldn't, right. we couldn't remember her name. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have been able to pick that out for anything. Thank you for writing in again. Travis <laughs> wants us Wells. to know that okay. she didn't come back for the second and third one because her mother was diagnosed with cancer. Mm-hmm. However, in 1991, she started a clothing store, Armani Wells, oh. which she still manages as of 2023. Okay. All right. I was going to say, she was out of acting after that. Yeah. Like She Good was for just her. gone. Clothing store. Good for her. Hey. Armani. Mm-hmm. The week before, we watched a movie called Constantine, and yeah. Tony Bradshaw writes in to say Matt Ryan nailed the character way better than Keanu Reeves, and he did a pretty good job. And Tilda Swinton and Gavin Rossdale were perfect for their two roles mm-hmm. in the feature film. Tilda Swinton was version. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was, Gavin Rossdale. We was disagreed with the something. Gavin Rossdale. He was something. I mean, he took some religious brass knucks to the face. He made it's- an impression. And an impression sure. was made on him. Yes. <laughs> there was some talk of the TV show Lucifer, which we determined yes. was based on a Neil Gaiman comic it, it that up, was. Yes, it also came up in the group chat again. Yeah, we, yeah. we discovered that Sean is a big fan yeah. of Lucifer. I, okay, I've watched a lot, and based on conversations that I found in previous podcasts, a Hollywood love this show. I believe you. <laughs> well, Joey Bly says, My now 17 year old watched Lucifer a few years ago with, with me. If nothing else, that show completely changed the meaning of Eternal Flame by the Bangles when Lucifer <laughs> sang it. Yeah. Yes. Only so Sean knows of, what you're talking about. A lot of singing in that, yeah. They explore a lot of stuff. Uh, the boy with the Jason tattoo writes in and says, Constantine is a fun movie, but the real question, what was your first Keanu Reeves movie? Mine was The Night Before with Lori Laughlin. Oh. Uh, probably uh, Bogus Journey. Point, sure point I Break, both. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mine was Excellent Adventure mm-hmm. and Holly. Mine was probably Point Break. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or that Paula Abdul video. Right, there you go. <laughs> Rush. Oh, I don't remember. He was in the Paula Abdul video Rush. Boom. Do you have Bill and Ted hair? What? Bill and Ted hair. Did he have it? The uh, long hair, the think, River's Edge hair. I think he had Before he cut it for hair. Point Break. Yep. Am I right? I think he had longer hair. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, thank you, all of you, for writing in. We really appreciate it. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with Sean. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, uh, I did not know that I was going to love this movie, <laughs> but I did indeed because I had no idea this movie was this movie. Yeah. I had no idea this was like black comedy, pseudo ish documentary ish. Um, 
uh, 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 this this is great. Nicole Kidman <laughs> is fucking great in this movie. Like like I said before, like everyone's so watchable in this. The construction of the movie, I think, is really good. Starting with the past events, you know, you realize something's up, and then you work towards it. Um, I, you know, it's been used in movies before, but I think it's used very effectively here. The cast is great from top to bottom, even people who are uncredited and just show up. Uh, I mean, uh, the the minorist role is David Cronenberg shows up mm-hmm. as an as an, an Italian assassin, right? <laughs> like that that's the smallest part of this. And if I told that to you, you'd be like, okay, I'll watch that movie. Mm-hmm. And then there's so much more around it. Um, wow, really, just um, uh, I, I think a I think a great movie. The subject in the middle of 1995, I think it was the perfect subject matter to tackle at the time because mm-hmm. this had to be like in, in the consciousness mm-hmm. of everybody to so to see something like this for it. OJ. Um, Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very well written. I think it's pretty superbly acted um, by everybody. Even in, how old is Joaquin Phoenix in this? Like, he's great in he, this. He's yeah. great. He he's looks great really young, time. but he's also just a small dude in this. Mm-hmm. But everyone's doing good. Um, yeah. I was very surprised with this movie because I hadn't, again, I came into this not knowing kind of the. Um, uh, what it was going to be and uh, kind of blown away about it, blown away by it. Um, yeah. Nicole Kidman's great. I, I don't know. I, I have doubted her in my later years and her later acting roles. I doubt her no longer. Uh, Nicole Kidman is great. Um, and so is this movie. I recommend to die for. Wow. Very surprised. Uh, <laughs> Michaela, what did you think? Um, so Holly and I have been talking about this off mic for a couple weeks because Does need a better title. No. Okay. No, okay. It, it works. Okay. Um, because uh, go. Criterion announced that they're putting this out early early next year, I think, mm-hmm. or, yeah, or all right, late, later this it. year. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yes, because my own private Idaho has been on Criterion forever. Um, and like that movie's fine, but I don't like it as much as everybody else does when it comes to Gus Van Zandt. Mm. And like his movies, this is this is definitely one of the lighter ones, even though there's a lot of dark subject matter in here. Some of his movies are just straight up depressing. I don't want to watch like, um, like elephant. Don't watch that one. Um, oh, did he do that? Yeah. 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 Like um, the Columbine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I watched last days, which is his kind of like fictionalized interpretation of Kurt Cobain's last days before his mm-hmm. death. Okay. Um, yeah. which is the closest we're ever going to get to like a Kurt Cobain biopic. So if you want to watch that, check it out. But I mean, it's, it's depressing, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Um, does, does someone play Michael Kirk? Pitt? I think I've seen some of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those movies that lingers on scenes too long, so they become annoying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like it does oh, yeah. that, and I think it's like he's clearly trying to create an atmosphere with that, but it's just not the most watchable thing. Um, this I think, I mean, obviously, Goodwill Hunting is most like accessible thing, right? But this, yeah. but this is. I think my favorite Gus Van Zandt movie. Um, and cause it is kind of like a true crime element, but it is a nice time capsule. You know, it, it's true crime. It's the office. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. And I mean, yeah, Nicole, this is one of Nicole Kidman's best performances of her career, mm-hmm. I think. And she has a lot of them and she has a lot more range than people give her credit for. I think yeah. you got to go back to the early stuff for the weird stuff like this and dead calm, you know, like mm-hmm. there's a lot of good gems back there. Uh, and I, she's always trying. She's always swinging for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And it really comes off well in this movie. She she plays an unhinged woman very well. <laughs> so, um, and I mean, th- we didn't really talk very much about her style or her vibe, but like the look, the costume design, mm-hmm. the set design of this movie all has a very distinct personality. It does. That it's very good. Is really intriguing, and I really appreciate. I just like this. Feels like an auteur movie. You know what I'm saying? And I like that mm-hmm. you can feel a Gus Van Zandt movie, even though sometimes it's uncomfortable to feel it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really love this movie. I'm glad it's finally getting on Criterion. I hope more people, you know, pay attention to it now. I think this is like, this is like remind me a lot of Pearl. If Pearl came out, it, it was if Pearl was about 1995 instead of 19, <laughs> 1912 or whatever then, it was. Yeah. yeah. This is like her descent into madness is very much like Pearl and just I, I, I'm a star. I'm a star, you know, <laughs> like um, and I I love watching uh, unhinged woman spiral into madness in movies. It's great. Definitely recommend. Colin, what do you think? When Holly first said that she was bringing to die for, I thought it was the 1990s uh, vampire movie. Oh, oh how but unfortunately, that know. doesn't exist on anything more than uh, DVD at this point. Um, so, no criterion for that. No criterion for. I don't think you can remaster movies that were edited on, on video, so yeah, yeah, those yeah. are lost to time. 
I hadn't seen this one, but um, I mean, I, I was listening. To me, that's always a victory. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, right, that's number one victory yeah. right there. Um, Sean mentioned Serial Mom. I think that's a good yes. double feature for oh, this yeah. movie yeah. because there's totally. a similar vibe between them. If you like Serial Mom, you like this or vice versa. Um, I don't know that after listening to Sean and Michaela, if I have anything like an angle to add to this, the, uh, the performances were great. The script was great. Uh, I liked it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to like it because of the sense of humor. So I feel like that's a victory. Yeah, yeah. But it, but, but it's we not. We found the it's, type but, of niche black comedy that Colin yeah. well, that's I, I like black comedy. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's almost, and I don't want to say incidental comedy because it's very purposeful what they're doing. But as long as it's not a set them up, knock them down joke. Yeah. Because right. right. I usually right. see yeah. that coming. Right. I like the black comedy because it's usually right. more. And again, uh, yeah. they throw it away so easily in this. Yeah. It's just like, I can't believe they kind of said that in this situation. It's that's very darkly. My funny. wife's gonna kill me. That was <laughs> yeah. my favorite one. So much. Yeah. Like if like just go uh, watch it. I know they're very excited about it. I know I sound like I'm not, but uh, you have my, you, <laughs> right, you have already given the enthusiasm for to die for Hollywood. You think? Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot to add to the actual movie other than what you guys said because I think we're all in agreement. It's it's a fucking fantastic movie. I love this movie. Um, I'm just going to add a few like Pamela Smart tidbits out there because oh, all right. yes. um, this movie is loosely based on that case. Obviously, she did not have a hit on her at the end. Mm -hmm. she, went, <laughs> oh. she went to trial and she was uh, sentenced to prison for... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, she was. You're right. Yeah, right. for life, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Um, mm -hmm. She still denies knowing anything about the plot to murder her husband. Um, now and that you mentioned this. I feel like I've seen. It the, was a big um, deal. Yeah, I and feel, she, I feel like I've seen the ten years later interview. Yeah. In, and she, in she was like, you know, Nicole Kidman never came to see me. She never talked to me. <laughs> she never she like you then. wanted to find anything out about me. She's like, she she yeah, played a very the, one dimensional the inner character. Nicole Kidman, the yeah. inner like, I need to be a star. And I'm like, and okay, her but like. This is based on a book that's loosely based about you. Yeah, exactly. This isn't, it's it's Suzanne Stone. Yeah, it's, it's not, not called not the Pamela Smart. Smart. You know, yeah. like right. this is loosely based. I understand if it's a, based loosely on your life, you're going to be a little defensive, especially because um, it may have led to a jury verdict. Right. <laughs> like, I get why she's defensive. Actually, right. the, the author, Joyce Maynard, uh, even wrote a letter, like, defending, like, I'm, Sorry if this movie swayed anyone's opinion about her because that was not my intent. Did anything the, was the Pamela Smart stuff all wrapped up before any of this came out? When I'm she, guessing she, her thing went down in like 1990. Okay, yeah. so was so. it like <laughs> nothing from the the book or the movie could have swayed a, a, an actual verdict? Right? No, the verdict came uh, before the book was okay. even released. Why okay. did she say? I hope that nothing in the in the book swayed. The well, they go up because, for parole and yeah, everything. because she, oh, she, she, she yeah she went yep. for parole true, and true, she was true. just like or appeals or what happened. Yeah, yeah, she tried to. She, right. Yeah. She was she was up for she tried to get gotcha. for parole and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, just a few tidbits. She is still in prison mm -hmm. as of now. Um, but, yeah, I don't have anything to add. I think you guys covered it. It was a really good movie. I love Do this movie. Do they think she killed someone or no, they hired she they think she hired someone so to kill someone. It's the, it's it's literally the, same, the same it's the same story. story. Okay, the, same. The, the difference is she, she was an AV teacher. Right. Yeah. Okay. But so she was seducing and sleeping with students. She was a yeah. teacher. Yeah. That's right. the that's pretty I mean not the only, but that's yeah. the major difference is that she just wasn't a newscaster. She right. was an audiovisual teacher. Um but her student did right. kill her. Yeah, husband. I did see the picture. Holly, yeah. this is a way better version of May December. Basically, this is a way better version of May <laughs> December. Oh, good. Then I yeah. never need to watch. Yeah. Fuck May December. Yeah. I hated that movie. <laughs> that, that movie was, was so shit. serious too. So serious. I I felt like I was taking crazy pills <laughs> that everyone was like, "This is the best movie. It's nominated for us." I'm like, that, is, that is not a black comedy either. This they said is it was. A it is not. Lifetime movie. Yeah. That movie was shit. Did I don't you? Understand. Was that one of your? That wasn't your worst movie. Yeah, though. it was. It was, was my it? worst movie. Okay, it was your worst movie. I hated that movie. Yeah. Fuck that movie. Sorry, but yeah, this one. All right, sure. stop, stop, being, stop um, being so enraged by it because that makes me want to go sickness. discover you the have enragement. A sickness, Fine, go watch it. Sean. But sickness. If, it is a sickness. If but, you want to put yourself but, through that, but, that's your. But no. That's but your then, it, but then Holly brought this movie. There you go. And that's so all now, I need. Okay. This is the better one. That's, I'm good then. Yeah. I have. We, so, have, we got there. That's four recommends for today. For so that means you have to watch it. You're contractually obligated by listening to this show. Dems and, the rules. Right? And you won't be disappointed. All right. So next week, we're watching a movie that's chosen by... Michaela! What are we going to watch next week? We're going to do something very different from Ooh. this movie. Yes. And we're going to watch X-Men from 2000. What? 
What? <laughs> Shut up. As of, expecting yellow spandex? Well, uh, exactly. As of recording this episode, Hugh Jackman has been Wolverine for 24 years God of our damn. lives, guys. Yeah. Wow. God damn. Yeah. We're going to go back to where it all started. Yeah. Yeah. X-Men. Wow. In mm-hmm. honor of the trailer for Wolverine yes. and Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. All right, X Men. All, right, all right, we know Michaela's trying to get likes on the <laughs> trying to get listens on the podcast platforms. Good for you. Yeah. All right, well that's next week, uh, X Men on Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.